It has been quite some time since I've taken a look at MX Linux. I remember when I did that I kind of enjoyed it. And I, at the time I was surprised because I was not very familiar with MX Linux. All I knew is that somehow they made it to the top of the DistroWatch rankings. And as we all know, those are the most perfect rankings in the world and they are never gamed. So we knew that MX Linux just had to be the most popular Linux distribution ever made. So I went into that review back when I did it very skeptical because I figured that, you know, they somehow gamed the system and the distro was probably trash, but it ended up being actually really good. MX had a lot of really cool, uh, unique tools that they themselves have created to make their distribution kind of awesome. But like I said, it's been a while since I've gone through and taken a look at it. So with the release of MX Linux 21, I thought I would go through and install this thing again and see if it's still as good as I remember it being. Now, I probably won't go through and show every single application that is installed on this thing. My plan is to go over some of the new features and also kind of reacquaint myself with some of the custom tools that I remember being there. So let's go ahead and install this thing and see what's new. So here we have MX Linux 21 Wildflower in a VM. And we have this welcome screen. Now I'm going to try to find the display settings here so we can see if we can get it to be uh, full screen. And we'll choose 1920 by 1080 and apply. And there we go. And we'll, we'll keep this configuration good. And then we can close that. Now, what we'll do is go into the VM thing here and go full screen. I'm sure there's a key binding for that, but I'm not actually using VirtualBox right now, so I, <laughs> I'm learning something new. Anyway, so what we're gonna go, go ahead and do is install MX Linux. And we have their custom installer here. The keyboard settings is fine here. We got the terms of use, which is, uh, this is exactly what you wanna see in a terms of use. This is literally like what, seven lines long? I mean, <laughs> that's awesome for terms of use. I mean, I, even I would read that and I'm the laziest person in the world. So let's go ahead and uh, hit next here. Now, this part here is supposedly new. I don't remember from before what this looked like. So I couldn't tell you what the differences are, but the partition manager for the installer apparently has been revamped. And I've never seen one that looks like this before. So it gives you the disk that you want to use. And then you can go through and do this little slider thing. That's actually kind of cool. That's not something that I've ever seen before. You can also do the encrypt option here. That would encrypt the whole disk. And then you can also do a custom partition uh, setup. So we'll go ahead and do, use the whole disk and do next. And then yes. And it's all you're going to start the process here. And we want to go ahead and leave these settings all the same. That's going to affect grub and do next. And then we'll enter our credentials here. And this can be MX VM. And then, uh, I, if I remember correctly, you have to have a domain here in order for to, for you to continue. Uh, yeah. So we'll just we'll just keep an example. Dot com, I think it was, was. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Let's leave that, and we'll leave that as work group as well. Okay. And then uh, this is fine. This is also fine. I really like this drop-down menu. They don't waste their time on a stupid map that nobody should use. They, I, I think I remember saying this precise thing before. Uh, dear Linux distributions, don't use the map. Just give us a drop-down menu. I know that they have the tech most uh, installers have the text box at the bottom where you can search for your city or region or whatever, uh, and that's fine. But here, I don't even have to type anything. I just it's a, it's just a drop down. I mean, maybe this isn't as good as a, as a search box. Uh, you could argue either way, but at least it's not a map. You know, the map is stupid because it's you can't click in a, the appropriate places. And half the time I click Michigan, which is where I'm at, and it gives me New York. I don't know if most Linux distributions know this, but New York and Michigan aren't the same state. Really, they're not even that close together. They, I mean, they look close together, but I mean, there's a few lakes in between. You'd have to swim really far in order to get there. Otherwise, you're going to go all the way around. All right. 
Uh, <laughs> that's a great rant. Anyways, we can leave the time setting that is there uh, as they are. Okay, now we're going to use uh, do a username. So Matt is good. We will do our very strong and complicated password, and we'll leave the root unchecked. I believe that will give us uh, pseudo access for our main user. Uh, I hope it will. Anyways, uh, I wonder if you all right, if you want the default user access to have no password, leave its password empty. This will allow the user to log in without requiring password. Obviously, it should only be done. Okay, so it doesn't say default. The root user is similar to the administrator user in some other operating systems. You should not use the root user as your daily user account please enter the name for the new default user account for the basis if needed you can add another user okay so it doesn't say if we leave this blank i'm going to go ahead and just enter a password here just in case with the default debian install which the mx linux is based on debian with the default debian installer if you leave the root account or password you know field blank that gives the default user root access it puts it in the suitors file I'm assuming that the same thing would happen here, but I don't want to ch chance it because I don't want to have to go to edit the damn sudoers file, file uh, if I go to try to install something or do, the, uh, do an update, you know. So I'm just going to do that this way. Uh, and then we can just go ahead and hit next. And then we're just waiting for it to finish updating. Now, this is not the prettiest installer I've ever seen, okay? It's fairly blah in terms of looks, and it has a lot of text and a lot of things that you'd have to read if you want to, you know, get instructions. If you're the type of person who reads instructions, that is a, uh, a thing that you can do. Um, <laughs> but what I love about it, I absolutely love that while I was doing all that stuff with the user account, it was installing. And the only other installer I know that does that is the Ubiquity installer, and I don't even know if it still does it. I honestly can't remember. But there, at least with the Ubuntu installer, you used to, after you selected the partitions and stuff, it would start installing while you were doing the, the user stuff and putting in your credentials. The fact that this is already done. I don't have to cut the video to wait for this to install. It was installing while I was bitching about New York and Michigan being the same state. Uh, so that is awesome. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is uncheck this and close this. And then I will go through and just, man actually, you wanna know what? I'm in, I'm not in VirtualBox, I'm in Vert Manager. So it's possible that I could just go ahead and restart this and it would go ahead and restart right into uh, the installed hard drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do that. With VirtualBox, which is what I'm used to, sometimes you have to remove the installation media. Oops, I guess I am shutting down, okay. It doesn't matter. We'll restart it and then enter to continue, which I did do. Okay. And then here we are. I did hit shut, shut down. Apparently, uh, it's still going to go ahead and restart, which is fine. Okay, so we're waiting for it to start up here. And here we go. We'll enter our password. And then we'll go ahead and before we do anything else, we'll go into the displays again and reset the display resolution. Oops. I... Uh, that's one thing that's always bothered me. The The menu should be here up th there at the top, I think. Because I'm always going to hit that power button. But that's easily changed. Okay, so we're going to go here and 1920 by 1080 and apply and keep and close. Okay, now, and we'll go back here and hit the full screen. Like I guess that I'm sure there's a key binding for Vert Manager. I just have not learned them yet. All right, so we have the MX welcome application that shows up here. Now, apparently there's a new tour here somewhere. So we're gonna actually click on the tour and we're gonna take the tour first. That's an interesting map. Okay, using a new operating system for the first time can seem challenging and scary. That's definitely true if you use a GNOME based distro. Um, <laughs> damn, burn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, MX Tour is designed to introduce and orient you to many of the features and graphical tools of MX Linux XFCE edition. Uh, each of the, so uh, MX comes with XFCE, KDE, and Fluxbox. Now, this is the XFCE edition. They apparently have made a tour specifically for each desktop environment, so that's really cool. 
uh, each of the topic areas have been separated into tabs from the far left. You can navigate these tabs by clicking on them or using the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard. So optimizing this for people who are used to using keyboards, that's also cool. So we're gonna go ahead and go down here. We're, this is the panel. Uh, all basic stuff is just showing you what the stuff is. You've probably noticed that the default desktop of MX Linux has a single vertical panel along the left side of the screen. I did know that. I'm not going to go ahead and read all the stuff, but uh, basically that just tells you everything that's in the panel. Uh, it, this goes through the Whisker menu, um, which is one of the best uh, desktop environment menus out there, although the new KDE one is really nice. Uh, I should have chose the KDE version of this, but I, I decided to go with XFCE for whatever reason. I think it's just because it was at the top, uh, which is always the best reason. Okay, so the the taskbar is going to go through and t show you uh, the open applications, and this here shows you how to... Um, are these actual, like, click... No, that's an image. Okay. Um, let's see here. Conky. Conky is just the time. And it sh this shows you the Conky manager, which is nice because usually when you, you when you manage a Conky, you do it through a config file. Having a GUI for that is going to be really good for people who aren't interested in d dealing with config files. Okay, so moving on to MX Tools, these are all the MX Tools things that they've included, uh, and most of this is going to be in the settings app. We'll look at those later. MX Welcome, which is basically what we just clicked on. MX Tweak, which is uh, MX Tweak brings together many small but often used customization organized under different tabs. So this will allow you to change the panel, theme, compositor, display, config options, and other. Basically that's just taking a lot of settings out of the XFC settings application and putting them into one kind of a one-stop shop place. We'll look at that again in a minute. Install apps. The MX package installer often referred to as MXPI allows you to search for, install, and remove packages and applications quickly, safely, and easily. It consists of tabs to help you install. So they're big on tabs, if you if you haven't noticed that. Um, so this is their custom like app center, similar to like what Manjaro does with, the, with PAMAC. Um, but obviously, this is going to be matching to the uh, Debian repositories instead of like the, the Arch repositories and Manjaro repositories. So uh, updating, uh, the MX updater sits in the notification area of the panel. The icon turns green when updates are available. Usually green means like clear, I would think, right? Maybe that's not the uh, a great color for, for it, but uh, whatever. Um, the icon turns green under when updates are available and notifications will also alert you the updates exist. Left clicking the icon opens a window showing available updates. Right clicking on the icon brings up a menu with many options such as view and update, view and upgrade, check or up for updates and preferences. MX Snapshot allows you to create a bootable USB file of your currently running MX installation. That is brilliant. <laughs> that is really cool. Uh, I'm sure that this is a tool that existed. I feel like this is a tool that existed somewhere else, but the fact that you can go through and just create your own theming and stuff like that and put all your stuff and applications on it and then do this and you just permanently have that, like a bootable drive to that installation, that is really cool. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that feature alone makes MX Linux completely worth it if it actually really works well. Uh, time shift is basically. Uh, allowing you to take snapshots that you've made and then restore them. It's a backup tool. I don't know whether or not this is using something like ButterFS or if it's doing something else, if it's just doing the normal time shift stuff without ButterFS. Uh, but either way, time shift is a great tool. Uh, system info and then get help. So that is the tour. Now, uh, it's I mean, that is kind of spectacular because this is aimed at new users. That is very in-depth and not... but. The, my only criticism of this whole thing is that the tour thing is the last icon on the bottom. This sh That was so good, it should be at the top. They should move the frequently asked questions down here and put the tour up here at the top. Because this is probably where most people are going to look first. They may miss this. And that would be a crying shame because that tour was really good. It was very, very in-depth. And for new users, that's really good. Okay, so we're going to... The rest of this stuff is wiki, tools, user manual, tweaks, which we'll look at here in a minute, the forums and the videos and how you can contribute. So uh, that is it for this. We'll just go ahead and click this. So it, Oh, 
Yeah, and there's another thing that I like. By default, the show this dialogue at start, startup is unchecked. Uh, almost every other distribution has that checked by default. So win for MX Linux. Okay. Now, I feel like I've commented on that before. The fact that it's still that way is really awesome. Okay. So let's go ahead and deal with this panel because this panel is is probably my least favorite thing that I've seen so far. When you have icons right next to a, a, a another icon up here at the top, you assume that this is a menu. But it's not a menu. It's your power off button. Either these should be down here and the taskbar should be up there or something else. Your menu should, should be next to the task manager, which is what this is. Uh, that's really weird. So what we're going to do is type in, we're going to go to that tweak tool and see if that's where... Your current panel settings have been backed up in a hidden folder called .restore in your home directory. Uh, MX Linux, guys, use the word directory. It's not a folder, okay? Anyways, we're going to go here, the panel. We're, we're going to first display at the bottom, and then we can hit... I wish you could hit just hit apply. Oh, we can. It's right here. There we go. Good. Now, you see... When we moved it to the bottom, the icons went into the proper place. Like, they're no longer over here. <laughs> you know, that's the way it should be. I mean, I'm gonna, I can understand wanting the panel along the, the side. A lot of people do that. I'm okay with that. I could even live with it over there if, you know, you want it to be there. Uh, but the layout of the widgets or the modules or whatever they call an XFC panel, are they called applets or is that cinnamon? I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Uh, but anyways, the, the default layout of the panel is dumb. That needs to change. It's the first thing I would change, and obviously it is the first thing that I changed. Okay, so let's look at this wallpaper for a second. That's a cool wallpaper. We're going to keep that. We'll look at the other wallpapers here in a minute. That was a, that was a me. Uh, ooh, something shiny. <laughs> anyway, so we'll move to the theme here. Okay, so this is basically... So in like XFCE settings, I wonder if we can see it. The settings manager right here. This is XFC settings panel, right? And you can hit appearance, and this would just this, these are basically the same thing. Okay, so it is a little bit of a duplication of effort kind of thing, but I think that they, this one-stop shop of all things awesome is awesome. Uh, but anyways, we can go, some of the it does have a lot of themes pre-installed, which is a win for me. So this is, let's turn let's go ahead and go dark, because so this is what the MX dark theme looks like, and. It, you have a couple uh, different variations of it. Thick border, dark thick border, which gives you this weird blue border, which is looks a little uneven to me. It looks thicker at the bottom than it is at the top. You can just do dark. We'll just leave it there. Um, that's for the window manager. Uh, it also has arc dark at a weta, which um, you should never use. Arc, arc dark, arc darker, arc light. Uh, Blackbird, which looks like this. But that's calling me wrong if that doesn't look like Grubbox. Uh, let's see, here's the Emacs. Oh, wow, that looks exactly like Emacs. <laughs> By default, the Emacs theme is, is not good. I installed that yesterday. Yeah, okay, so this is Graybird. That's not a bad looking theme. Graybird MX. Uh, high contrast, which just comes with pretty much every Linux distribution. Uh, Matcha. Uh, a few di uh, different... I wouldn't be surprised if Matcha is a, a fork of Numix. Because those look like the Numix colors to me. But anyways, uh, let's see here. Oh, and there's, see, look, new, there is Numix, and that looks exactly the same. Uh, it's just a little bit different, maybe a little bit more brown. Uh, see MX Comfort, which is, I believe, the default, and MX Comfort Dark. So we'll just leave that there. Uh, basically, you just have the same options for Window Manager, and then we have the icon. So by default, it looks like it's the they have a, a custom fork of Papyrus, which is a fine... Uh, icon set. You also have Numix here at Aweta, which uh, again you should never use uh, because those things are ugly, in my opinion. You got Epipyrus, Tango. Uh, those are uh, skeuomorphic. Okay. Um, oh, and we have the regular... What the hell are, is a Gnome icon? Uh, that didn't change anything at all, so we're just going to go back up here to this one here. Interestingly enough, the icons didn't change live. You probably had to close them in order for that to happen. Um, wow. Interestingly enough, like I said, the icons didn't change. So we're going to go back here. We'll change them here. There we go. That's better. And then uh, this one here. It's fine. Okay, cool. Uh, 
probably would it's probably just a, a a restart issue we could probably restart it and get to the other one to change it anyway so that was the tweak tool for the icons which i you know closed so we can go open that back up again all right the compositor so this will allow you to do um change compositors so you ha have the choice between xf window manager which is the def default for xfce and compton uh so if you're more interested in compton It'd be interesting to see that's probably probably what they're being using there is PyCom because I don't think Compton itself is actually still being developed. Uh, we got some display tweaks for dis, uh, scaling and such so that you can work better with high density displays. Uh, that is pretty cool. I don't have a high density display, so I can't test that out. Uh, some config, uh, random configuration options, enable desktop zoom, reset Thunar custom right click actions uh enable single click on desktop that's the way it should be single click is the best for sure <laughs> i mean it should be default everywhere you can tell i started out in kde because kde you know as as a linux user uh kde at least used to be i don't know if it's still default now but it used to be single click was default and that's the way i learned how to use linux and i got attached to it and I was in for a nasty surprise when I stopped using KDE because everywhere else it's double click, right? So that's the first thing I change every time I install a graphical file manager is to change that sync to, to single click behavior. The fact that this is single click by default, more bien, right? Okay, so the other thing is reset light DM, uh, enable mounting of internal drives by non-root users. Okay, that's actually really cool because if you, ha if you have two hard drives but you're not ha having them either connected by grub or some other way, all the time you have to enter a root password in order to get into the other drive and while i can understand that the problem becomes that some graphical file managers specifically things like nautilus i think nautilus doesn't do this right but there's a couple others some of them won't even let you connect to them at all because they won't they won't bring up pull kit in order to actually you know let you enter the password to enter into those things this option here is actually really cool Okay, so that is the tweak tool. I'm going to go through the menu here real quick. All applications, about MX Linux, accessibility, ad block, ADSL, uh, advanced network configuration, also mixer appearance. The interesting thing about XFC is they always break out their settings uh, panels as separate applications. Uh, so we have archive manager, asunder, CD ripper, uh, bash. Okay, I remember this from the last time I looked at, at MX, they have a GUI application to manage your bash config. I can hear the terminal people out there who are very uh, attached to their bash configs screaming because this is a, just a weird thing to, to even exist because that's not the way. I mean, I've never seen any other distribution include a graphical way of managing your bash RC. Uh, that's what this is. You can add aliases in a graphical uh in a graphical way you can change your prompt you get a few extra prompts or at least one other prompt <laughs> you can create your own prompt right from there that is and you have some others so you can choose your history length and you can you can actually add things to the path right here from the gui <laughs> okay uh I, I don't know whether or not to be disgusted by that or seriously impressed every single time I see this. Like I remember being completely surprised by this last time as well. Uh, that is cool. Uh, also uh, weird. Um, okay, so let's scroll back down, back to past this. We have Bluetooth Manager, Brightness System Play, Bulk Rename, which is part of Thunar, uh, Catfish File Search, uh, Chirrut Rescue Scan, in order to true into a different si a Linux system, Clementine for the Music Application, uh, a CLI Apt Base Package Manager. What is this? So this is act okay. So this is like a script that runs apt, like apt get and apt update, or apt update apt upgrade. We'll go ahead and do an update here. Why not? There shouldn't be too many things. How this is this release was just yesterday. Uh, apt update yes. So there apparently was a few. Apt get update now yes. Wait, a it just it keeps going around in circles. So there apparently was nothing. Okay. You should probably. It appears that at least one list file is missing. So what is, I wonder what the purpose of this is if it doesn't actually, you know, work. Let's go ahead just curiously and search for terminal and see what terminals we have on here. So we have the XFCE terminal. And that looks 
like that's it that's good uh, you a lot of distros go through and put like four terminals uh this is just, there's oh okay so we do sudo apt update and and, and sudo apt upgrade okay and then do yes so it looks like there was only one update there to be done. Okay, so that's done. All right, anyways, actually, while we're there, does control T bring up a terminal? It does, awesome, uh, as it should. Most most uh, Debian and Ubuntu-based distros should have that because it just feels like it's default. Now, for me, obviously, I'd want to do super enter, but that's because I'm a tiling window manager guy. So the next thing is, uh, let's see here if I do free dash M, We'll do so. Look for some memories. So we're using about 638. Now we do have some other things running. Uh, Thunar is there in the background. So uh, if we close that, we could probably let's go ahead and close that and we'll run it again. Yeah, that actually went up. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyways, let's do a uh, uname a, and we're using the 5.10 kernel. So this is a little bit behind, but again, this is Debian stable. So you're going to expect to be a little bit behind, you know, for a long time until, because this, this is not the unstable version where you'll get updates. Let's see if NeoFetch is installed. It is installed by default. So we're, again, this is the 5.10 kernel. This is bash using bash 5.1.4, which I believe is also a little bit behind. This is XFC 4.16, which is the most recent version of XFC, if I remember correctly. Uh, XFC is actually the perfect desktop environment for Debian Stable because neither one of them are going to change very much. You're not, you're never going to have to worry about a brand new version of XFC showing up with a lot of extra changes because that never happens. Um, all right, so this shows all of the things that we are using. This is the XFC terminal. They're using Liberation Mono for the font. And I'm going to tell you right now, that that right there is not the processor that I'm using. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm assuming that has something to do with the virtual machine. Okay, so there is that stuff that we normally go through. Let's go back to the applications. We're not gonna. Uh, well, I don't even really remember where we were. Oh, this one here: CLI apt based package manager, clipboard manager, color profiles, conky manager, which will again manage the concrete, which is cool. We can. Um, we can change the theme, but it only comes with one theme. It'd be cool if I had more than one theme, uh, but you could obviously add some and save your own. And this adds a, added a, a system panel information stuff over here. That's cool. And uh, we can literally go through and just, I mean, obviously some of these are in conflict. Um, that's cool that that exists. Uh, you can also preview it. It's not much of a preview though. That's weird. That must be, maybe it's a little broken. Oh no, that that's there. That worked, but it only only gives you a preview if you click on it. Maybe there's just not a preview of that one. Oh yeah, there we go. Let's use that one. It doesn't really. None of these really show up all that great uh, on uh, this wallpaper. Uh, let's go ahead and choose one of the other ones again. Where it's over the side. Okay. Anyways, that's the Conky uh, Manager. That's really cool. Uh, Again, usually you'd have to do that in a configuration file. So the fact that there's a GUI is really good for new users. Probably why that that bash RC thing exists as well, uh, even though it's still uh, weird. Uh, disk uses analyzer. We're rolling the Ds here, people. There's a lot of files here or a lot of applications. Firewall configuration. I'm not. We're moving fast now. GW is here. Genie is here. Uh, let's see the GNOME dial-up tool. What the? Okay, uh, I didn't even know that still existed. Uh, Gparted is here. Uh, see, so Gthumb, something for Git. GTK hash, that's not Git, man. You learn how to read. Htop is here by default. Uh, we'll look at that here in a minute, probably. Uh, job scheduler, that's going to be a front end for cr like Crony or something, probably, for cron tabs, or for cron jobs, I mean. Uh, let's see, the keyboard settings, last, last paint, that's going to be like a Microsoft Paint, I believe. A uh, clone, we got LibreOffice here by default. Uh, let's see, your light DM, uh, lucky backup. I wonder why you need lucky backup and time shift. I'm going to know how those two things play well together. Uh, that's a game, mail reader, uh, midnight commander here is here. Um, interesting choice. I would, uh, um, not, you don't see a lot of distributions with, uh, MC installed anymore. Going back down here. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, MX Conky. 
What's the difference between the... I mean, okay, so they have two different Conky configuration uh, things. Uh, but this one here, just get this. Is, the other one allows you to change the the configuration file. This one allows you to change the location of the stuff. So if we Alt and left click, we can actually move that. That's awesome. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, and we can that means we can move this as well over here where we can actually maybe see it a little bit better. Okay, that is cool. I'm not exactly sure why those two things aren't combined. They probably should be combined. Uh, then you don't have two different separate two separate ones. Um, okay, so going back down here, I'm sure I'm missing a lot of stuff. It doesn't matter. Nvidia installers notes, PDF stuff, Peggy, which is uh, I believe a game. Print settings, pulse audio. Um, let's see your task manager, Thunar, time shift, transmission for uh, P2P stuff. Uh, torrents and su such uh, VLCs here installed. That's gonna be your default video editor, and then XFC terminal. So okay, XF burn, which I'm still s astonished that gets included on almost every distribution. Okay, so those are the applications we've looked at the perf we've looked at the startup performance and stuff like that and such. Uh, this is going to be probably the ESR version of Firefox, I believe. If we go to help and then about. Uh, this is version 93. This is not actually the ESR version. I would have thought that they would have used the ESR version because this is Debian stable. Usually that has the ESR version. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But that's the most ver recent version of Firefox. Uh, we can close that tab. Okay. Um, anyways, so that is MX Linux. We looked at some of the, the tools. Uh, if we go here to open up Firefox and then we search for MX Linux and look for the MX Linux. Actually, what we can do is just click on this. We have the homepage right here. So we can look at the, some of the, the new stuff that we didn't actually look at. There's a new UEFI live system boot menu, So, but I wasn't able to show you this because obviously this is a virtual machine that doesn't use UEFI, uh, but the UEF, UEFI boot menus will look different. Uh, we have updated versions of XFCE, Plasma, and Fluxbox. Uh, if you're interested in a Fluxbox tour, again, you can leave a comment in the comment section below and maybe I'll take a look at one of those. Uh, we looked at the MX tour, the user password for admin tasks by default. Uh, I believe that just means you have to at, at, enter a password when you do stuff. I think, I don't know why that wasn't be, wasn't default before, uh, MX default, MX comfort default theming, which is what we were looking at before better Mesa and, uh, real tech support and a ton of customizations for Fluxbox. And then obviously this is uh, Debian 11 bullseye based. Okay, so those are the new things in MX21 Wildflower. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, every time I try MX Linux, I'm just blown away by how really, really good it is. And I would, I mean, it's not for me, I don't think it's the prettiest desktop out there. But it's XFCE. You can change XFCE to look however you want. It's not as restrictive as like GNOME is. Uh, that's my second shot against GNOME in this video. Uh, I think that is the rule where I have to shoot. I have to shoot GNOME every time <laughs> in every video. But it, um, so you can make it look however you want. I don't particularly care for the theming and the window decorations and stuff like that. But it's not the ugliest thing I've ever seen. It's perfectly usable. The tools that they give new users are just top of the line they're so good and i i mean even the, i mean I, I, every time i look at that bash rc editor is it just blows my mind that it exists but it's a good idea because most new users don't know what the fuck a bash rc is they just don't and they won't even not only do they not know it exists but they don't wouldn't know why you'd want to edit it uh and it's cool that that's there. It might be a little bit confusing because, again, most people aren't going to know why they should edit that. But for the curious amongst the new users, uh, that might give them a like a, a gateway into becoming more of a nerd and using the terminal a little bit more. And that's good for everybody because there's a lot of more efficient ways of doing things in the terminal than you know through a GUI. So that's really cool. I really love it. And all like I said, the the MX Tweak tool, again. 
awesome because it's not, I mean, it's not as if those settings don't exist other places, but they've gone through and crammed them all in one place and it's made it so much easier to edit your panel, edit your themes, edit the display, uh, re you know, the resolution and uh, the scaling and all that stuff all in one place. Really cool. Uh, I highly recommend MX Linux. If, if I, the, the, see the thing, this is where it's hard. The two Debian based distributions that I like the most are Sparky and MX Linux. Now I will say this, if you're looking for, if you're a new user and you need those extra tools, those, those tools that are going to help you transition into using Linux, MX is by far what you should use. If you are a long time user of Linux, but you don't want to deal with the Debian non-free bullshit, uh, Sparky is probably the one you should go with because that just gives you mostly a just a vanilla Debian install, just but without the again Debian bullshit that you have to deal with for installing stuff. It uses a Calamari's installer. So between MX and Sparky, Debian has some really good options for both new users and longtime users, so they they don't actually have to use regular stock Debian, which is uh, probably a good thing because Debian has its own problems, as we've discussed many times. So that is it for us on this video. If you have any questions about MX Linux, I will try to answer them in the comment section below. If you have used MX Linux and you really like it as much as I seem to, you can also leave those comments in the comment section below. Make sure you like and subscribe to the video uh, for many more distribution reviews and uh, long-term reviews and window manager stuff. I really do appreciate everybody who subscribes. So I uh, thank you for subscribing. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon Chris, East Coast Web Gen 2 is fun too. Patrick L. Marcus Meglin, Jack Knife Tools, Steve A. Mitchell, Art Center, Merrick Camp, Joshua Lee, J Dog, and VS3's Rock. Every time I go through the patrons, I feel like I should go through and create a song out of their names. Uh, but because I, I'm a benevolent person, I won't do that and make everybody suffer for me singing. Because uh, that would be uh, pure and utter torture. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs>